you get this sense of confidence that you're doing something that other people are not willing to do. Like Mike Tyson talked about it and he said that he doesn't like getting up and going to run at four and five in the morning. Like it's not fun to him. He's like, I do it because it gives me the mental edge, the certain time of day and how you do it and how aggressive you are when it comes to it, like just being you know, obsessed with that. It's the fact that you knew you were doing it while he was sleeping. And so give yourself that competitive edge. <laughs> All right, so how do you as a man live a life of impact and fulfillment? We're going to talk a little bit about this today because we get a lot of questions about, you know, just that, like how do you as a man gain respect and garner respect from not only your peers, but also your, you know, your loved ones, your family members. Um, but I think the most important that people forget is yourself. Like how do you learn to respect yourself? There's a lot of that going around too, where people lack self-respect. And really this episode was inspired by the pamphlet that we have at the Squire program where we share it with the youth and there's 30 rules of how to live a life of impact and fulfillment. Um, obviously I'm only going over five of those today because there's already a part one of this, uh, of this episode and I'll be making future parts in the, in, in the future to come. Understand that these five things are super important to install into your everyday life so that way you can you know, better yourself um, and learn how to respect yourself and overall, man, just build your confidence. So the first one is wake up when all of your friends and peers are still asleep and start stacking wins. This one for me personally has always been something that's helped me a lot because even from a young age, um, I think there was only a certain period of time, maybe I think like freshman year of high school where I kind of got the, you know, the lazy teenage bug and I wanted to wake up at like 9 a.m. Whatever. I was homeschooled, by the way, for all you guys thinking like, well, how was that even possible if you had school? I was homeschooled. I think that was it was. No, not I think it was the first year that I was homeschooled because I was homeschooled all four years of high school. So that freshman year, uh, I didn't have to wake up at 6 a.m. anymore to get ready and then go wait for the bus. I could wake up at whatever time I could, uh, wanted to hypothetically. And uh, so I'd wake up a little bit later. But after that, I realized that waking up early and stacking wins, getting your work done before everybody else is going to help you in so many different ways, man. I mean, for me personally, that was um, the, those were the days that I was skating heavily, like, you know, especially because I was homeschooled, I got to wake up early, do my, my schoolwork earlier in the day, knock everything out, be done by like, you know, 8 a.m., um, I wasn't driving yet. So my mom would drop me off at the skate park and I would be able to just skate all day. And I would skate with the older guys because my other friends were at school. My peers were at school. And so I got to skate with the older guys. A lot of them were better than I was. So I got to learn faster and, you know, kind of uh, use that hierarchy to help propel me further along when it come, came to my skate career. And so that helped a lot. But it all came from waking up before everybody else, making sure I prioritized getting my work done first, and then I could quote unquote, play the rest of the day. Um, and that's going to be a, a, a game changer when it comes to your confidence as well. When you're up before the sun's up, or when you're up before your friends and family are up and you know that you get this sense of confidence that you're doing something that other people are not willing to do. Like Mike Tyson talked about it when, um, actually a few boxers have talked about it, but Mike Tyson talked about this when preparing for, I can't remember which fight. And he said that he doesn't like getting up and going to run at four and five in the morning. Like it's not fun to him. He's like, I do it because it gives me the mental edge. It's not even the physical edge. Yes. You have to hit the, hit your, uh, get your miles in and hit the road and, you know, get your world work in just because you don't want to be tired when it comes to your fight, but the certain time of day and how you do it and, uh, and how aggressive you are when it comes to it, like just being, you know, obsessed with that, it, that gives you the mental edge. So now when you get in the ring, it doesn't matter if you know the person also ran, you know, 40 miles that week. It's the fact that you knew you were doing it while he was sleeping. And so give yourself that competitive edge. That's number one. Uh, number two, eat clean, train hard and stay lean and battle ready. So this is a very, pretty much a self-explanatory one. I really don't have to go in depth about it. You should understand that taking care of your body and mind is going to, you know, garner more respect for those around you, but also yourself and, um, and give you confidence at the end of the day. Um, I am a little bit too lean. I was talking to Maine about it a couple of days ago. I had a fight. My fight was, uh, two weeks ago now. Now I'm back to lifting weights, eating more protein again. I'm ready to start looking like a man again. Right now I'm a little bit too lean, too slender. Um, but anyways, it's important to make sure you train hard, you eat clean, 
uh, stay lean and stay battle ready because you never know what's going to happen. You want to be able to protect yourself and your, your loved ones. So that's number two. Number three, write down your goals and be specific, man. Be very specific. Like I hear people all the time say, well, I write down my goals and I read them, but it doesn't really work. And you ask them to list what they wrote down. And it's something very simple. Like, well, I want to be, I want to be, you know, a millionaire by, uh, I don't know, a, from a couple years from now, three to five years from now, that might sound specific to some of you, but I'm talking like, like very specific, like not just, I want to be a millionaire. I want to have, you know, $5 million in my bank account by, you know, uh, 2026, you know, let's say August of 2026. And I want to be able to do this with my family. I'm going to take this trip with them, whatever, like very specific, man, be specific because you need to let your imagination run wild a little bit, man. Like, what are you really after? Like, what are you looking for? What do you want to accomplish? And who do you want to spend time with and enjoy, you know, the fruits of your labor with once you actually get it? Like, be very specific. And that actually can be a really fun exercise, man, to let your mind kind of just wander and be like, man, what would I do? Where would we go? And the more specific you get is going to be the higher uh, chance that it's actually going to happen so long as you do the work, right? But if you're writing out a very basic plan, you don't really have any details hashed out. You're just kind of, you know, writing very basic um, plans that most people have. It's going to be very tough for the universe or God to work in your favor to help you get that thing because you don't even know where you're going. Uh, number four, always be prepared to bring the violence in defense of yourself and others. So I've talked about this quite a bit on a couple of different episodes, so I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I will say it one more time that I believe that every man needs to learn how to uh, defend himself and his family via martial arts. So I don't care if it's boxing, like boxing is my preference, or if it's Muay Thai or if it's Taekwondo or if it's, you know, uh, wrestling, jujitsu. A lot of people do jujitsu nowadays. It doesn't matter what it is, but learn something. Like you don't want to be the guy that, you know, gets into an altercation or not even gets into an altercation. You see something happening, someone getting bullied or messed with, or, you know, your family's being, you know, um, bothered and you have no training, like not in any martial art, not in any form of, you know, uh, self-defense or nothing, like not even Krav Maga, like, damn, bro, you have no training. So you don't want to be that kind of guy, right? You know what I'm saying? You want to know something, have something under your belt. Uh, number five, create peace, seek out peace, but again, be prepared to bring the violence when the violence is the only option. And this is kind of like the uh, fourth point I brought up, but it's a little bit different because this one talks more about mindset. The first one talked about being prepared to bring the violence in defense of others. So physically, right? But this is almost like, you know, mentally, what it's going to do for you to learn how to box, how to do jujitsu, how to wrestle. It's going to bring you a different so, uh, sense of calm than, you know, any, someone who doesn't have that kind of training. The reason being is because you understand that you don't need to press the issue or, you know, even if someone's pressing the issue and coming to you, you understand that you're going to, you know, you, what you could do is that, you know, you could really hurt this person and you don't really want to do that. Number one, you don't want to hurt this person because you know what you're trained to do. And number two, you also know you can get in more trouble because you're trained and, you know, you, you just don't want to go down that route because it's not worth it to you. So the piece that is going to be brought to you by learning how to do these things is, is just, man, it's, it's the best feeling ever. Like that gives you confidence right there. You see these guys, you know, in a, in a bar setting where they're arguing and one guy is just going crazy and just like, you know, ripping the shirt off all crazy and, you know, getting up in the dude's face, like, ah, beat you. Like he's going crazy, man, he's losing his mind. And the guy sitting across from him is just cool. And he's, and he's, he's even kind of like, Hey man, I don't, I don't want to fight you, bro. I, I'm sorry if I upset you. I don't want any problems, you know, whatever, bro. That's the one you want to be scared of. Not the dude ripping his shirt off and, you know, trying to get his boys to hype him up. And he keeps looking at his girl to make sure she's watching how much of a badass he is. That's not the guy you want to be scared of. You want to be scared of the dude who has, you know, cauliflower ear. And he's just sitting there just like, Hey, sorry, man. I didn't mean to offend you. Like my bad. That's the guy that's going to twist you up into a pretzel and embarrass you in front of everybody, man. I'm telling you right now, you don't want to be, you don't want to be in a problem with that guy. Just, just let it go. Listen to his advice and agree with him and say that you don't want a problem either. Um, so these are five really quick things, guys, that I think that if we can, you know, collectively as it's just men in general, man, we can kind of learn how to implement these into our daily lives. I think generational, generationally, excuse me, we can do, you know, a lot of great things for our sons 
um, for our nephews that are watching us, our peers, you know, just the younger generation that's watching us come up afterwards. Um, I think that uh, a lot of men are not doing these things and you're seeing a lot of nonsense going on, like I said, in fights and bars and people just being uh, emotionally erratic and they're just letting their emotions get the best of them. So anyways, guys, so do these five things. It's going to bring a lot of value to your life. Like it's brought a lot of value to my life and mentors alike that I have like Bedros. Um, and, uh, man, so many other people, man, the other instructors that we have with the Squire program, like I've learned this directly for them. And so anyways, I want you guys to continue to do this to better yourself. I want to see you guys win. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in.